Valentine's Day. We're doing a Valentine's Day special today. The love is in the air. Love is in the air. Yeah. Um, today we're going to talk about relationships on the court and people who try to play with their significant others, uh, people who try to compete, don't really know how to communicate with each other. Uh, and you know, the, the ever comical yet awkward playing with your friends who are in a relationship and they don't know how to treat each other on court situation. It's always a great conversation <laughs> and even more fun to watch. <laughs> it's fun. It's awkward. Uh, you get to make fun of them afterwards, but they're usually so heated in the moment that everybody just kind of backs, backs off. <laughs> and you ever mm -hmm. see that family guy episode where people are just pounding on each other and <laughs> Peter Griffin's like, they're just talking, let them work it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, it's tough. It's tough to get that situation right. You know, uh, because you have two very different types of love. Uh, you definitely love volleyball, maybe three, four, who knows? Uh, you love competing. You love getting exercise. You also love your partner, but you want to find the best in each situation. And what we'll probably talk about today is that there are just too many goals that might fl conflict with each other. And mm -hmm. you got to get your goals right and if you haven't had that conversation we're going to help you try to steer that conversation uh to ask and answer the right questions so that on this valentine's day you guys don't end up going out to the beach and uh making it your last making it your last <laughs> beach session um yeah it's kind of funny when whenever you talk about sport because there's usually one person in the equation who takes sports a little bit more serious than the other um, and competition as a whole. And even yesterday uh, when I was sitting watching the Super Bowl, uh, go Rams, brought home the Super Bowl. Congratulations. Uh, I had to be yeah. a default Rams fan uh, yeah. because I was in Utah. I, you know, I really, I would root for the Jets. It's not going to ruin my day. <laughs> either yeah. if any football team wins or loses, but you do feel for them. You know, you, you feel yeah. the athletic career. So I would right. say that I'm like a super fan with stats, but what I do love is seeing that emotion, knowing what every one of them went through mm -hmm. and, and then seeing that play out. And in that way, like I'm a sports fanatic, but in a lot of ways, I couldn't tell you a single stat. <laughs> right. But, but even yesterday uh, after the game was done and they were showing clips of, uh, Odell Beckham and Aaron Darnold and all these people crying that they've won the Super Bowl. And this girl that was sitting next to me was like, she was Brazilian. So I don't think she quite understood like the whole football side of things, mm -hmm. but um, definitely understand sports because they're certainly uh, passionate about their sports in Brazil. Uh, but she, she was like, I don't understand guys will cry at the end of a sporting event but if anything sad happens in their lives they won't shed a tear <laughs> and i was like yeah i mean it's just a different it's a different kind of love mm -hmm. you know so uh i think it's it's important to talk about that today of all days um, yeah so we can just separate the different kinds of love and figure out how to make everyone happy yeah 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 or happier yeah. <laughs> exactly yes yeah. happier or All stay right. happy yes yeah. exactly mm -hmm. so maybe uh, uh you know I'll, I'll talk about probably one of the most common situations that i see at least and then we'll see if we can just sort of navigate it uh here's what i see a lot of a a woman a girl who has played for a long time who has got the skills down pat and her technique is flawless, but a stronger, faster guy comes along and can produce the result at a better level quicker 
than that woman could have because he's jumping higher, he's moving faster, everything looks disgusting. And if he plays against other guys, he's going to get wrecked. But because he's playing in a co-ed, you know, he's able to kind of get the job done. And then we have these two conflicting things where the woman wants to tell this guy how ugly everything looks. <laughs> that <laughs> is all off. And the guy is sitting there looking at the girl saying, I'm getting it done. So then there's immediate tension there. Mm -hmm. How do we navigate this, Brandon? Oh, that's a tough. I mean, first off, uh, and I think we'll talk about this throughout the whole portion of this segment today, but just understanding where people are mm. in their volleyball lineage you know obviously this girl had in this situation and obviously the roles can be reversed a lot but um, you take this i gotta plug in my phone so it doesn't run out okay um but whenever we're thinking about somebody who is a little bit more advanced on the technical side playing with someone who's maybe new to the game uh, it's it's going to be a lot of encouragement and just realizing where that person is in their volleyball progression. Obviously, if they're six weeks into playing the sport and you ask them to play in a co-ed tournament, then you probably shouldn't be worrying too much about what they look like, whether it's what they look like passing, setting, or hitting. Uh, it should more be based on if you guys as a team are able to come together and have fun first and then second, maybe you're also getting a little bit better. You know, I think establishing this idea at the beginning of these tournaments of like, hey, let's go into this tournament and we're either trying to win or we're trying to have fun. And that that type of thing has to be that type of idea has to be established very early, because if in this specific scenario where we have a female that's very tech savvy and understands what she's supposed to look like while playing, but this guy is just out there being an athlete, trying to win as many points as possible, doesn't care what he looks like. Um, then if you start correcting this person over and over again, eventually they're going to dislike you more than they dislike the other team. And I think that that's something that I, just establishing right away, hey, we're here to get better. That's when coaching can happen. That's when, especially if there's somebody in the relationship that is more technical and has advice to offer, then that's when you can kind of spitball back and forth and be like, Hey, that was a good pass, but remember, keep your arms straight, mm. you know? But if a person's just out there like, Hey, this is a really good opportunity for us to do something together as a couple, like let's get out in the sun, let's get out of the house for the day. Then it's just gotta be laughing it off. Be like, even joking about it after the match, be like, Oh man, I can't believe you scored on those plays. Cause you look like crap. <laughs> Uh, those conversations are really funny to have after you've won. Um, but especially when the struggling starts to happen, if it starts to get too coachy, uh, that's, that's when you start to not enjoy being there. That's when other people start to look at you and be like, I can't believe they're doing this in public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, it's just, it's, it's something you definitely want to avoid. So I think making it very clear right away, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to have fun? Are we trying to get a little bit better? Are we trying to win? And all of those things are very different. Yeah. So very different. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I like that you said that have the conversation first. And the problem is that having that conversation is actually really difficult. Like that talk of and i i literally just went through this with uh with janelle because we were playing beach tennis and every time we pepper or i'm playing beach tennis i always and you might have known this with me from peppering like especially in college i try to find the edge of your ability and i just ride that 
So you might end up failing like 50, 60% of the time. And somebody who just wants to like get continuous touches hates peppering with me. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, and, and my thing is like, let's ride the edge at, at all times. And so in trying to find somebody else's edge, like in trying to find Janelle's edge, she was getting frustrated because she just wanted to hit. And so then we had a little talk afterwards and I said, what do we want out of this? And it became a good half hour talk, but all of the things that we talked about, they weren't easy to answer. Because I said, well, do you want me to challenge you? Yeah, she does. When is the right time to challenge you? Right? Like, should we just rally back and forth? Am I supposed to try to help you get better? Or am I supposed to be your teammate? Um, where like I'm full, constant, always supporting. Right? So we had to have those conversations in, in how I can really just speak to her when we're playing beach tennis together or when we're playing volleyball. In volleyball, I handle it pretty well. Um, and I'm lucky, <laughs> I'm really lucky that I have you, that I have JM, that I have Logan Weber, uh, all of these people around me at all the volleyball events who I know are going to be fantastic coaches for Janelle. So when I see her make a mistake, I'm like, I have a team of seven people that are going to help her correct that. You know, it doesn't need to be me, <laughs> um, which, which is, is, it's a big reason why in the first place, pro teams have coaches really like you have two people. And instead of that advice or that fault coming from your teammate, who is always supposed to have your back, um, it can come from coach whose job is to point out our weaknesses, you know, a player's job, your teammate, is to be there for you and battle with you. And a coach's job is to help kind of steer the direction that you do that and make sure that they're making corrections along the way. And too many people get all of these roles confused, you know, where they think I'm a coach and a player at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that is a very difficult line to walk. And I don't recommend doing it ever, unless you have had extensive conversations with somebody who's like, I want you to lead me. I, I imagine that this is how Logan and Hayden's conversation is going to be. Mm -hmm. I hope it is. Uh, Hayden has, you know, I talk to a lot of people and they're like, Ooh, you're going to be Hayden's partner. Like it's going to be brutal. And I get, yes. And yes. And no, like Hayden is a, is a high expectation guy, but the guys that he's played with recently have their own style. You know, he played with Santos, who has been doing his thing for 30 something years at a world championship level. Um, Hayden likes to run extremely fast and Santos likes to play slow, right? Hayden mm -hmm. uh, got to play with Sean Scott, who he played with for a really long time and they ran a lightning offense and Tri was young when he played with Hayden. And he's like, yes, I get this legend that I get to work with, teach me everything. Ryan Doherty and Theo, they were established and they had a game that they had been playing for a very long time in a very certain way. And then they partnered with Hayden, who he's like, he has a very specific type of, of way he plays and expectations. And that's where you saw that friction. Cause maybe Theo and Ryan didn't want to be led or felt like they should be led at that point when John was so used to being in that, this is how we do it role. Mm -hmm. And I think, I really think that if, if he can stay healthy um, and if Logan can find a way to get some extra time with Hayden, that Logan's so hungry and so open to learning all the time that like Hayden's finally found like his dream partner back, uh, you know, from since when uh, Tri left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, and it's so funny when we're, when we're sitting here talking and how this conversation automatically goes into true partnerships because <laughs> Even when we had the conversation a couple of weeks ago about how to be a good partner, uh, it sounded a lot like relationship advice, you know, um, mm -hmm. and the volleyball world is always known for that, you know, uh, and the main thing that I kind of picked up from what you were talking about just now was this idea of being flexible, you know, and I, I think that that's, that's kind of a big that that's a big thing to take away, especially if we're, 
kind of going back to this relationship idea is don't jump the gun on doing something before you've completely understood what your partner is and needs. You know, Mm. Uh, I think a lot of times we, I I know I'm guilty of it, you know, and uh, we, we see our partners and we see, we know what we do well and we automatically expect them to be exactly like I am, you know? So whatever my strengths are, your strengths need to match mine. Like Mm. whatever I'm good at, whatever I feel comfortable talking about, I'm going to tell you as much as I can. But uh, obviously I don't talk about the things that I'm not good at to you. Right. Which is, which is kind of interesting. So I think uh, the flexibility thing, and when we're talking about Hayden, it truly, I think watching him and Ricardo was probably one of the more impressive things that I've seen because there, there was an extreme language barrier, but you had two of the most experienced beach volleyball players left probably on the planet uh, that are, that are still playing at a very competitive level. And without having these conversations, they were able to, with playing with each other for a little bit, they were able to figure out how to make it work, Mm. you know? And I think, uh, when we go back to relationship advice and we're thinking about playing with your significant other, uh, you have to, you have to be just as flexible. You know, the, if you're getting in a fight within your first set, first couple points of a match, then that just shows me that you're not really thinking about the other person at all. It's, it's definitely Mm. something in internal, uh, that you're, that's bugging you. Um, which I think is a a life thing as well. (laughs) We're getting deep out here today, (laughs) Um, but yeah, it's just, I think being flexible, understanding what people are looking for and how you can be the best partner for them. We've, we've, talked about that in extreme depth in the, one of our previous yes. episodes but uh whether it's you making them laugh whether it's you being hard on them whether it's you asking them questions of what you can do better you know it's celebrating big points celebrating little points um i think that that's something especially with you and i uh where our friendship and relationship has grown on the court a lot since I moved out here because before I moved out here, we, we really only played indoor together. Mm. Um, and then once I moved out here in the last couple of years, it went from where I would show up to practice when I first got here and I would be like a little intimidated to play with you. I would kind of hope that, uh, things were, gonna fall into place and that things would go well and that would make us be happy with one another but now it's it's the the stress is completely gone you know Mm -hmm. whenever i show up to practice with you it's uh, i know that we're there one to get better and two to just have fun you know i i can i can truly feel that and i know that you know that i need that um and so it's but it's been a growth period you know and i think uh a lot of people don't get the chance to go that far down that road. Right. And it's, you know, you and me, like, a, I treat us kind of like I treat our, f- whatever, I treat you like family. Mm-hmm. It's when we fight, we're going to fight, but there's, there's no end. There's no, mm, this might break us, you mm-hmm. know, and then we won't be friends anymore. Like, when I disagree with my brothers and I, and I, and I, I let them have it at home, I go, we need to fight right now so that we can both get out what we have to say in a very clear way. But on the other side of that, there's no question that we're still together, you know, that we're still family. Mm-hmm. And I think in relationships, when you see the boyfriend and the girlfriend who are just kind of testing it out, when you see them on the court, they start thinking, man, the way she is reacting now when I hit the ball into the net, what if that's how she reacts when uh, my kid makes his first mistake? You know, you, you think crazy mm-hmm. like that. You're like, is this indicative of how she is as a mother? Is this indicative of, of how she's going to be, you know, if I don't fold the laundry? or <laughs> Wash and, But the that's, what, that's literally what goes through your minds. You make yeah. these random connections 
that you think are so legitimate and they have zero place in the rest of the world. The between those lines, those volleyball lines is its own universe. Mm -hmm. And you cannot start connecting it with everything outside of it. This is why whenever anybody's like, I hate Kobe Bryant, I hate LeBron James, you're like you're an idiot. You have never sat down at a dinner table with this guy and had a conversation, you know, mm -hmm. like, to say that you hate, Oh, but you know, he acts so cocky on the court. So I know he's a jerk. That is the court. That's its own world, you know? So you, you have to realize that volleyball and how you react and how you act on that court, that is in no way indicative of something outside that court. Can it be? Yes. Is it definite? Is it normally? No. Uh, you have to treat those as completely, completely different and separate because somebody can be a fantastic relationship person, a fantastic friend, somebody who always has your back. But then on the court, when they're competing and it's volleyball, they just get so pissed all the time and you can't connect the two. So if you're, if you guys are out there and you're in these like young to middle relationships and you're starting to to say in your mind, oh, well, this is how it's going to be for the next 50 years every day when I wake up. No, it's not. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's what it is on the court. And you need to have a conversation about what you need on the court. And then don't start making random connections to, uh, you know, well, her father or mother acted this way. And, well, and that's why that's leading to her to do this on the court. And it's like, uh, relax everybody <laughs> let's not let's not go and, and go down that road so keep your life separate from your volleyball like between those courts that is a huge thing that i that i really want to emphasize for everybody yeah different worlds i really really like the way you said that um i've personally never said that <laughs> and i i feel like i just learned a life lesson right there um <laughs> Not that I've, I'd, I haven't dated a, a volleyball player in quite some time, um, but maybe if I would have taken that advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but it, it, it really is, it's cool to hear that. And again, it's way easier said than done. You know, mm -hmm. that's one of those things. But um, I'm wondering if we could think of like a, uh, a cool challenge or something, like if, uh, Something that came to mind is every time you go to a tournament and you're a couple, especially if you're playing in a co-ed tournament, you have to bring like a bottle of fireball or something like that. And every time there's like an argument, you have to go take like a little sip. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And that way, or you can make it a, what's like the minty, the minty alcohol. I don't know. Oh, I've heard. I, yeah. Rumple mints or something like that. I've heard some people giving that as a wedding present. Like anytime you have a fight after the fight is done, you both have to go to the fridge or freezer, pour yourself a shot, take it, and then you have to kiss and make up. Um, <laughs> and I, I think that that's like, I think that's pretty funny when I saw that gift and uh, I think it would work. Um, and especially on the volleyball world that mm. we all know everybody likes to drink and have fun. So if you're of age, yeah, and right. you are having trouble in the co-ed world. Uh, maybe that's something you can implement into your next tournament. Let us know how it goes. Maybe right. <laughs> maybe you play a lot better. Maybe you get a little too sloppy. Uh, yeah. But I'm rooting for you. So we, we went over that one scenario where you have experienced female who I've, I've seen it a number of times, uh, who is significantly more polished than the guy counterpart who just kind of gets it done in a very ugly way. And by the way, that happens in so many sports guys. Technique is just garbage, but they can muscle their way through results. Um, uh, there's a lot of criticisms in a lot of sports uh, from that, but we can also talk about <clears throat> when players are just equal you know when when you have a, a first place avp player and a first place avp female right uh, male and female and they're 
they have to have this conversation of, yeah, we can dominate. Yeah, I know what you're capable of. Uh, but am I bringing my volleyball partnership when I'm in the same gender tournament? Am I bringing that type of attitude to this co-ed fun tournament, this practice session? Like, are we here again to win, to have fun with each other, or to just kind of spend time on the beach with friends? And those dirty looks that you give anybody, let's, let's talk about like any partnership, but any dirty looks that you give when somebody screws up or like the shoulder drop and the head drop to the side, you have to control those things. Mm -hmm. You can't keep showing these physical expressions of, yeah, you can be disappointed in somebody's result or somebody's action, but you need to know what that shoulder drop is going to do to them. Is it going to make them better? The answer is certainly not. It's going to make them more upset. You know, they're they're down already because they know like they didn't get to a ball or whatever. And now you're just kicking them in the stomach with your, you know, sassy body language. Mm -hmm. So everybody out there, learn to start controlling your body language. You can experience emotion without having to express it. And this is, this is a battle, honestly, that, uh, that me and Janelle talk about a lot, where I talk about feelings or writing feelings. I am of the school that you can experience emotions, but your outward state and your actions can stay the same, can stay flat, right? The, the emotions is, is your weather inside your mind and inside your body and how you react to it is what's going to move you forward as opposed to just letting the emotions carry you for a ride and then letting them dictate your next action, your next words. I, I like thinking through things and trying to say like, yeah, the emotions is one thing and I can experience that. I can feel it, but how I outwardly project my next feeling has to be controlled. Mm -hmm. I, and I think with those like disappointing looks and, and actions that people do, one, it doesn't it doesn't look good for you if you're just playing in a normal tournament with the same gender of your partner or right. if if that happens to be the person you're in a relationship anyway. Because what what it feels like to me is it's it's a two sided two sided emotion that you're giving. The one is that you're upset. And then two, I think whenever you're doing that, especially if it's in a tournament setting, it's not so much that you care that much that that person messed up. It's more that you want the crowd to know that you didn't mess up. Right. You know, so now not only are you making this relationship harder for you and the person that you're on the court with, but now you're also somewhat putting the crowd against your partner as well. You know, I've played with a couple people that have reacted in certain ways like that. And I've had to tell them right away, Hey, it feels like I'm playing against you right now, which is definitely not a thing that you want to do, especially with a sport with, with two on two. Yeah. Um, and I would, and I would say that when you're playing with your significant other, that is almost magnified, you know? So now whatever feeling a, a normal beach volleyball partner would have with you, you're doing it with your significant other. It almost feels like a, a betrayal, you know, like you're, it's, yeah. it's going to be taken harder and it's just so much easier to be positive and just laugh it off and forget about winning for a second because it's a funny word, but <laughs> well, in the long run, yeah, we'll say it's a better at, path to at stay the on. moment. It's, probably harder to do that um but yeah it's it, it'll keep you more sane it'll keep your partner more sane it'll it'll make you play better um but yeah i think it, it's definitely something that you want to avoid and do you remember when adrian carambula and stafford were partners for a little while and people were like really excited about that partnership mm -hmm. and adrian was brutal like emotionally and and what he did uh, with, with Stafford and Stafford's usually a high fire and positive guy. 
and Adrian had the worst body language. Um, every little fault that came through Adrian was just borderline abusive. And, mm -hmm. you know, the way he was making it look, he became kind of the enemy of the fans at that point where it's like, man, everybody loved Adrian, but the, then the way he was just treating his partner, you're looking at this and you're going, ouch, like this is not going to last. And he, you know, he fixed it. He was tough on, on Ron Yeri too. Um, and he really kind of, he's got that attitude, but that is who Adrian is. You know, mm -hmm. he's got a chip on his shoulder. It's how he likes to play. He likes to play with a little anger, um, a little, you're trying to prove that you're better than me and I'll show you that you're not. But with that, when you see that happening as well, that this person is treating somebody else poorly on the court, if you're a fan or if you're in that friend group, that is not how it is at home. Mm -hmm. Could it be? Yes. Could it not be just as equally? Yes. So you can't like look at that relationship and then say like, Ooh, ugh, that must be tough to deal with day in and day out. <laughs> Again, no, that's, that's what's living on the volleyball court because of right. the volleyball goals and what's going on there. But it, it's, it's not, necessarily indicative of how they wake up every morning and right. react to each other. And like, you know, you, maybe the guy's like not, or the, the, maybe the girl's not throwing her arms in the air. And like, oh, burnt the coffee again. <laughs> <laughs> Too much creamer again. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, can you imagine living like that? I, I hope that people don't live like that. And, and I think most people hope that, but <laughs> you, right. it's not necessarily, that's not what's happening. Um, but if you could translate that onto the court, if you're saying, if you're doing that on the court and how you react to a small, insignificant, negative thing, if that's with a big negative body reaction or some words, you know, that aren't uh, kind to your partner, if you could take that into yourself and you could say, imagine I reacted like this to all the other things in life. Mm -hmm. man, that would be terrible. I would be a terrible partner. She would hate me. There's no way that she would, she would stay with me. And, you know, I'd lose the love of my life here. You, if you thought that about that situation in real life and you brought that to the court and you say, maybe I shouldn't be reacting this way, then it's going to be better for you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a better situation. Yeah. And again, like this is, this is just for people that might have a little bit of tension that they don't want. You know, there, there are some couples out there that want to go for it. You know, they figured out a way to separate the court from their regular life. And, and they're like, Hey, like, let's get after it. If you're not diving for a ball, I'm going to let you know that you need to get this ball up. And that's really entertaining to watch too. You know, it's, yeah. it's really, really fun. Um, as long as you know that it's not, it's not with like a bad intention, you right. know, they're not doing it to put somebody down. It's, it's like these two super athletes, um, you know, a couple that comes to mind, I, I haven't seen them play co-ed together, but like Gina Urango and Eric Brannick, mm. um, both just ballers, you know? Yeah. And I could see them one, I could see them being extremely kind and extremely loving to each other when they're on the yeah. court and high energy same, with smiles. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I think they would be so fun to watch and I know they play a lot. Um, but I could also see them like if one of them misses a dig that they're supposed to get, I could see them turning around and being like, come on, like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? But should I move back there and make that dig next time? Like, yeah. making it a little fun banter back and forth. Um, but yeah, so it's, and once again, it kind of goes back to this whole idea of just having that conversation beforehand and really just understanding who your partner is. Um, yes. And we can use the partner in both senses in that, in that case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there are the people out there that they want to get yelled at. They want to have fun. They, they, right. they're, they're having fun is you can get that ball. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Or, and, and again, this is all, it's all going back to having the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you want to get out and you have a girlfriend, you have a boyfriend, you have a husband, you have a wife, and you want to share your sport with them, you have to talk about how they want to be talked to 
what your goals are for that time. And if they don't align, if you're saying that you want to be the co-ed national champion and you're going to push and grind your way to it and your partner just wants to be there to spend time with you, this is, it's not going to match and you have to figure out then a way to have that middle ground of, all right, how do I get what I want and how do you get what you want? Even though they're two separate goals, you can still work towards that national co-ed championship, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but without the conversation, without opening self yourself up to that, uh, you're never going to get there. And then there's going to be, here's what there's going to be a lot of, that silence when somebody gets angry or in your mind, you're assuming that this is why they're mad. And then they see that in you. They see that silence while you're turning around all of the questions and answers that you've made up for them in their own head without answering it for them, without letting them answer it. Mm -hmm. So you cannot be in that situation where there's so much silence and so much friction between you that you're not even, you're not even open to having the conversation because you think you know it all. You think you've already answered this. I mean, I, I remember trying to ask a girl out in like sixth grade <laughs> and I planned out the whole conversation. I planned out my first line. Here's how she's going to answer for sure. <laughs> first of all, you're already off. And then this is how I'm <laughs> going to play off. Like this is how I'm going to play off of that. And then she'll probably answer like this. And in which case I'll say that. And, you know, I said, I went there and I said my first line and she didn't, she didn't stick to the script that I had made for her. <laughs> And it, it was, what was hopeless, she thinking? you know, <laughs> like I had no idea what to do from there. Um, and that was it, you know, lost my sixth grade love because, uh, <sighs> because I had tried to assume what she was going to say and how she was going to feel based on everything that I would say, but that's mm -hmm. wrong. Uh, you're never going to, to know a hundred percent what your person is going to say. And yes, there are consistencies. So people will answer certain things consistently and react in a certain way. Um, you'll get to know those triggers. But if you're going to be in a good relationship, you have to stay curious and you have to continue to ask and have them answer those questions that you think are always kind of going to be automatic, right? Because mm -hmm. again, volleyball, sport world, it's different than an everyday life world. Right. So, and it, and it can change daily, you know, mm -hmm. I, and it, I mean, that happens to me sometimes. There's some days where I go out to practice and I'm like, today's a day I'm going to compete. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to celebrate, you know, I'm going to, today's the day I'm going to go for it. And then there's some days where I'm, I'm having like a sluggish morning and, or dealing with something and I show up and I'm just like, Today's a happy day. Mm. Today's a day that I'm not going to stress on my errors. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm here to have fun. You know, a lot of times uh, we have a phenomenal crew here in Southern California down at, uh, in Redondo at Knob Hill that we play a lot of Friday afternoons. And one of the main reasons I love going down there is because there is absolutely no stress. Like people are out there just to have fun and in the beach, especially in our lives, where volleyball is very, very, it's, it drives us, you know, it's, mm. it's, we're, we're doing it as a profession, we're coaching a lot, we're creating everything for beach volleyball, uh, we have to train, we're working out, and everything that we're doing in that sense is on our mind, but it doesn't change the fact that it's still a hobby for us, right, so there are some days where I want to compete. I want to go for it. And then there's some days where I just want to go down to Knob Hill and, and kind of have fun. If I hit a ball out, I want to laugh about it. I want, I want to hear some jokes, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, but it's important to know what kind of day that person's having. You could, you could have two of the best beach volleyball players in the world that normally love to push each other. They try to go as hard as they can, but then maybe something weird happens and, and now they show up to a tournament and things have changed, you know, and it's, it's just important before that upset conversation starts having, just give them a quick little, Hey, this is why I'm here today. This is, this is what I'm expecting. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling a little different, 
you know, and I, I think I've got, I've gotten a lot better at that recently about letting people know where my head's at. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think a lot of people keep that in because we, we judge ourselves a lot in this sport. Um, so sometimes it is a little hard to just take a step back and be like, you know what, this is, this still is a sport that I fell in love with. And sometimes it just needs to be that. Yeah. There's a, and there's a couple of issues, problems, things that we need to, to tackle from there because number one, you have to have your uncompromisables, you know, things that you will always do no matter how you feel emotionally and no matter how your body feels. As a young player, my body felt different every single tournament. And I would, I imagine that there was this body feeling that was my championship feeling. And if my arm felt too loose or my arm felt too tight, I would just completely let it get into my head and I'd say, man, I can't get it to that tension or I can't get it to that looseness again. Um, and at, at that point, you have to control your controllables. And we talk about that a lot. But if you're having a bad or a slow day, you have to promise yourself that you're still going to dive. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're going to lay down for a ball, even if it's a second late, <laughs> even if you watch the ball and you're like, I promise myself to always dive, then you make that move. You know, uh, always, especially for juniors programs, always jogging to shag for the balls mm -hmm. to make sure that the balls are collected. Because every time, if you're on a team with a big group, if you don't collect the balls quickly, you are wasting your rep time. You are losing time where you should be getting better if you're just sashaying over to a ball <laughs> uh, to put it in the cart. So you do have to have these uncompromisables. And I, all of this, guys, we have a free tool that you guys can use. And it's called better. It's at betteratbeach.com forward slash partner profile. I'm going to flash it on the screen here. Um, and these are just must answer questions before you play with your partner, right? Some of them, you can answer them once. Some of them you can answer again and again. And behind the scenes, we are working on a big, uh, volleyball performance journal where each day before practice and before you lift, you have certain questions that you need to answer certain questions that you need to ask and certain ways that you have to check in with your partner. Now, this is one of the little seedlings that's going to grow into that. And it's at betteratbeach.com forward slash partner profile. Again, it's free. It's a questionnaire. And you should fill it out. You should have your partner fill it out. And if your partner is your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whatever, then you answer the question and you talk about it. You say, what did you answer? How did you answer it? Okay. Why? Oh. That's interesting. Why do you think that way? You can't just answer it and then kind of assume, look over and say, I, I know how she filled that out. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, it's right. going to put you back in the, into the same, same place. And, uh, people who watched the previous episodes, they know that a lot of the questions here on this beach volleyball partner profile came from marriage counseling that I went through pre-marriage and still going through, right? But it's important questions and things that have to come up. And those questions are not always easy. And a lot of times they say, you really got to dig or spend some time on these answers. I'm like, what does that mean? Once you have an answer, you have an answer, don't you? But mm -hmm. then you start uh, diving a little bit deeper and realizing, like, huh, no, that's not exactly how I feel. No, that's not right. And that's often the problem with quick conversation. People get forced into an immediate response. And then instead of saying, huh, you know what, that's not exactly what I meant. Let me rephrase that. So it says, so it sounds the way that I feel about it. But instead what happens is the next person reacts and they say something. And now you react to how they said that. And immediately you're in your trenches, right? And you're dug in there and you can't get out of it. And you might be in the wrong friggin' trench. Be, because you said something that you didn't truly mean, it just came out that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so these, this better at beach.com forward slash partner profile, it's all of those questions or some of those questions that you, boyfriend, girlfriend, and 100% your teammate need to answer. 
and it will make everything much easier. It will clarify those things for you once you sit down, answer those questions, and then literally go step by step through those questions and say, what did you answer? Why did you answer? And uh, we can go through just a couple of those questions here, right? But the first one, we talked about it earlier, was what is your reason for being here at this practice or tournament? Answer this with a maximum of three words. You write down that quick answer, but then you're going to talk about it. Then you're going to expand upon it, right? And if one person is saying, like, I want to win, and the other person is saying, like, it, it's the weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I want to tan. Tan and sports. Tan and fitness. <laughs> That's fine. Th mm -hmm. Then, okay, huh, this is going, this should lead to a conversation of, okay, you know, I, I, I thought we we're out there to like kind of establish dominance over our friend circle. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking yeah. over. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the second question, we've been through this uh, in previous, uh, previous podcast, but what is the best thing to do to fire you up at the start of practice? If you're not there for competition, maybe you don't want to be fired up, mm -hmm. right? So that, that might be a null point, um, but answer it anyway, okay? This is a uh, really, real, real really quick, good one. Uh, yeah. Before you move on to the next one, um, I went down and watched a fours. There's a fun fours tournament this Friday uh, in Hermosa. <clears throat> and I went down and watched, and uh, there, are, there is one team specifically – uh, some of our buddies like Mike Shiv and uh, Sarah and Phil Burrow and um, James. And it, it was so funny because like you would look at some teams that were planning out how they were going to win. They were talking about the rotations and everything like that. And his team is like trying to decide whether or not their team's going to wear Speedos. <laughs> like deciding if they... If, and like what after each person scores what's their dance celebration going to be you know <laughs> and it's like it's just so funny to see those different planning stages and and when you watch the game you could you could tell it's like all right this team that focused on strategy and gameplay that's what they're playing like the team mm -hmm. on the other side of the net the team that was focused on whether or not they're going to wear speedos and helmets and what dance move they're going to do when they celebrate it they were the one of the most entertaining teams in the tournament. Um, and, you know, they didn't get the same result. Actually, they might have gotten a similar result to the team that was planning. But uh, the one thing that they definitely walked away with was having a lot of fun. So, yeah, it was and pretty cool to see. Check it out. If they're if they're all in a group talking about what dance moves are going to do for for an ace, uh -huh. they're all putting themselves on the same page. Right. That right there is a declaration of, guys, we are here to have the most fun. Right. You know, and for a lot of teams, for a lot of individuals, that in itself helps you play your best. So it's it's nice to see those conversations happening uh, right. <laughs> in action. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, All right, what we got for question three? You know, question three is, is a big one, uh, both for 100% for relationships and definitely for partnerships. But the best pick me up. What is the best thing to do for you when you are in a slump or had a string of errors? Um, guys, typically in all, the, in all the books and counseling that I've gotten, guys are a very how can I fix it as quickly as possible mentality. You know, what can I do? And um, more women in general, more women who want to discuss the feelings around it, want to be heard rather than going to an immediate solution because they feel that that's what's important is how we're feeling. And guys are very solution and fix it and, and, and hands-on oriented. So instead of just listening there and, and sitting in it, you know, guys want to get past it immediately. We don't like sitting in our emotions. It's just not what we do very well. Um, and so when you have somebody who's doing something wrong or they screwed up a bunch, right, you have to know, hey, what do you want from me? Is this a I should listen or is this a I should fix it? 
Mm. And just that simple question it will really, really help you know, when somebody starts talking about something negative. But it, it's nice to be prepared with a couple of weapons when your partner's screwing up. If they screw up in a certain way, maybe this leads to a conversation. Well, if they screw up because they made three, three bad shanks, don't coach me. Just encourage me. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure out, and that's a, that's a very important question to answer for all teams and all relationships, 100%. Because uh, silence, some people want to work it out on their own. And some people are like, I'm not allowed to coach them. I don't know if I should support them at this moment after they just like, is it going to look foolish if I'm supporting them after they just screwed up four times? Or is it going to seem patronizing? You got to figure that out with each other. And you don't figure that out unless you have the conversation. I couldn't agree more. I like that. Uh, Christian, yes, we see the live chat. If you have a question, leave it. We'll get to it at the end. Mm -hmm. um, all right. A couple of the other ones, you know, are, are on this questionnaire are play based. And we are talking a little bit more about relationship, but we have like how many feet above the top of the antenna uh, do you like your set? How far from the antenna do you like your set? Or how far is it? How far from the person? Some people like those different sets, right? But you, you need to spend time on that. Why are we here side and then agree on it and hold yourself to your promise. And uh, you need to work on it. This isn't going to be a singular sol a solution. Like I said, uh, with me and Janelle, she wants to be challenged. But if I challenge and I push for too long or you know she gets tired or hungry, that's a time where it's like, okay, now, now we back off, we, we play. Um, and everybody also has these time windows where you can be intense for X, X minutes, or you can be intense at the beginning of practice, the middle of the practice, the end of the practice. And you need to study that and experience it and, and attempt to make fixes, but verbally share that with your partner saying like, hey, it seems to me like you, you kind of get intense in the middle of the game. And maybe get tired at the end of the game or you like a long slow warm-up and i just like to start jumping and hitting you know have to have those conversations have to figure it out so we recommend talking <laughs> it's that's tough it's, it's pretty much the whole point of this whole podcast <laughs> it's just yep. have a conversation before you get in a fight yeah <laughs> and control control your bodily reactions control what comes out of your mouth don't dip your head to one side don't throw your hands out um just make sure that when you are playing with your lover your partner right you know why they're there and you support that they know why you're there and then even when you know that that grandfather that big overarching reason there are still little miniature things that you need to continue to work on. And if you do work on them, it will make everything more enjoyable. I think a lot of relationships give up on playing with each other because it got rough a couple of times. And they're like, we just don't play volleyball together anymore. Instead of how do I modify the way that I play with my girlfriend or boyfriend? Mm -hmm. Right. Cause it, it, I mean, in theory, it, it should be good for you, you know? Um, I know I've, I have dated a, a girl in the past that was a beach volleyball player. And um, just I was, yeah, pretty much. Um, but <laughs> but <laughs> go, uh, go ahead. yeah, I, there, there was an intimidation factor there you know it was like i i was scared i was like i don't want this to make us worse mm -hmm. you know um but if a simple conversation was had we we probably could have had some fun playing some co-ed tournaments together yeah so it's pretty yeah. funny it's funny to think back on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so guys you can play with each other we just need to be open to that conversation which might be more difficult than the actual playing experience but if you do there's an avenue there that you can find together where you can enjoy the sport but you both have to be on the same page 
if somebody doesn't want to be coached, want to be yelled at, then you got to shut up your coach. You know, whatever side of you that wants to help them, instead turn into a cheerleader for them, right? Um, and in most relationships, just just be your partner's cheerleader. Mm -hmm. You know, especially externally, if you want to, if you want to share something, you want to like have some serious discussions with them, do that and, and do it in private and do it in a setting where you're not immediately having to react, where you have the time to sit down and discuss car rides are great for that long car rides. Right. And then those moments where you can just decide to turn off Netflix and you can say, Hey, I got this little questionnaire from betterbeach.com. I wonder if you want to go through it. I think it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. And again, I feel like we should uh, forward slash partner profile if you guys are looking for that. Yeah. And if you have a significant other and you do this, uh, send us an email afterwards and let us know how it goes. Um, I feel like we should reach out to like someone that just popped up into my mind was like uh, the Kwiatkowski's. Um, mm. cause I, I just saw that they played in a co-ed tournament this past weekend and they're, they're just phenomenal. So, um, I'm curious if they just happen to fall right into that happy go lucky category, or maybe it's just the, maybe they have had those conversations. So might have to reach out to those two. Yeah. Uh, a couple other big time announcements. So, uh, we'll conclude that, that part of the presentation uh, i yeah. hope you guys get a lot from the from the profile but currently we are doing a limited time offer if you're looking to hit the next level this year if you are getting into right right now we're in the middle of february and you want to jump start your summer so that you can play better so that you can win tournaments so that you can pick up better partners i'm telling you right now that the key is not getting as many touches as possible. Too many people make that mistake. It's not just hitting a thousand cut shots, right? It's knowing when to hit the cut shot. It's knowing how to design your offense that you can do that and so you can limit mistakes. So if you're looking to get a complete upgrade to your game this year and you want to score more points, you want to win more tournaments, or you just flat out just want more control, Right now, for a limited time, every one of our courses is on sale for only $39 per month. That's not $39 per course. That's for all of them, which means that your 60-day max vertical program, which <laughs> one of our guys, uh, Jason, Jason Lavelle, he just retested at week six, and he's already added six inches of vertical leap six inches he's like honestly a lot of it's from doing the mobility portion every day but i'm super strong like i just feel super strong and you and me know like we're getting a lot stronger so we're, we're getting immediately mm -hmm. faster and stronger on the court but it's including the 60 day max vertical the serve receive master class which we include some at home drills if you want to be a hand setter this year if you've been terrified of hand setting and you just wish that you could master it we have one of the best programs that's ever been built on the internet waiting for you so that you can practice all of your hand rhythm at home. And if you wanna go for online coaching and virtual coaching, that's a separate membership. But all of this right now, which has taken us three years to build, it's all available for $39 a month. It's on our website, go to betteratbeach.com uh, forward slash store. And if you wanna learn about any of the programs in detail, for sure, hit us with a DM or send an email to support at betteratbeach.com. But it will not stay at this price for long. We know uh, how valuable it is and how much work we've put in. And more importantly, we know the results that these things get. Being able to watch your own video, to see yourself play, to work on your game at home and see it from a bird's eye view, that's the thing that's going to make a big difference in your game. Not just thousands and thousands and thousands of reps. Those will help. But if you get thousands of reps doing it the wrong way, without any guidance and making up answers like we talked about, thinking that you know answers without ever having heard anybody else say that. How many answers in your life come from a place where you watched something and you assumed that that's why it happened instead of getting the answers from the best players, coaches out there? 
that's what we built. Uh, it's $39 a month right now for all of our courses and the 60 max vertical and 50 practice plans. So go ahead. If you want results this year, join up and, uh, we will see you in the group. It's better at beach.com. You can go forward slash store better beach.com forward slash store. And you'll see that membership there. And, uh, I will see you in our private Facebook group. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of really good information and you know it's kind of it's interesting this weekend i i did the we had a clinic in santa monica um that took some coaches up to and hung out with uh miss grace for her birthday yeah and it was uh i there was one true beginner at the clinic and afterwards i was talking to him for a little bit and and he was he was kind of giving off the impression that he he was he was like oh man like i just I wish I'd played for a little bit longer before I came out here. And I had to tell him the opposite. I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, -uh. I was like, you are in the perfect position to be out yep. here because now you're only building on good advice. Yes. You know, you're only building on something that has been proven to work. And so while maybe your touches aren't as consistent as everybody else because of your now new understanding and new learning, you're going to be able to use these keys and ideas to progress way faster than any of us did. And, and I kind of remind people a lot that that's one of the main reasons that we wanted to do this was because we felt like we were slowed or delayed in our progress in the sport because there wasn't an avenue out there for educating. And mm. so uh it's the whole reason behind us creating these courses these videos these workout programs these practice plans because those weren't available for us and we we were still able to make it happen but if we would have had this a long time ago or if somebody else had created it then who knows the level that we could have reached at what age and so. that like being able to get one answer to one question is, and I tell people one answer to one question is thousands and thousands and thousands of points. Yes. It's not one answer, one point. It's thousands of points that you're now ready to win for the rest of your playing career. And if you mm -hmm. if, like, if you can see my fingers here, I'm holding up 10 fingers. You can start going on any one of these pathways, right? But it, that's because you're making up that path. There's one way to start out that's going to be a best way. And yeah, it's going to be a thick line, but you want to make sure that you're starting out. So if you're just starting out, start the right way. Build your mm -hmm. house on a great foundation that will last you your whole career instead of developing stuff that you're going to have to knock down later and then rebuild it anew doesn't make sense it's expensive in real estate it's expensive in your career so start the right way with a great foundation and you can find that foundation better beach.com love it all right a little uh q a yeah start down at the bottom great topic mateo my guy love him to death who knows maybe he'll show up at the next camp he's like our, he's our new vip camps. he's our vip you know um, this is so true. You're saying I really feel it the same way. I play a lot with my boyfriend who is a beach volley coach. <laughs> well, hey, have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Kelly Flynn just totally disagrees. So <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what we were talking about at that point. Um, hope it, hope it wasn't the part where we're like, just be kind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see. I, I'm interested what that was about. Uh, our best teams have always controlled their body language and helped each other with encouragement and reminding each other to focus on the point at hand. What mantra might you encourage players to use for each other? I, I think that it's so individual. It's so individual. I, like mantras, mantras become dangerous when you make them so broad that a whole team can use them you know obviously there's simple ones that you can use like if you want to get in the zone for before you pass mm. um i know we have it 
written on the back or on one of our bracelets, right? Yep. Do you remember what it says? I don't have a bracelet on me at this moment. I got to have somebody to tell me. JFD. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, not that one. Uh, oh. the, the smaller bracelets that say, uh, like, Oh, uh, yes. Uh, no, I don't remember, remember what it says. Breathing, now. holding, yeah. uh, weight, look, what accelerate. It, yes. Yeah. And so those like kind of mantras can be very helpful because they kind of get you in the zone. But if you're doing something that has to do with encouragement or something along those lines, then most likely it has something to do with uh, an individual issue that you're battling with. So I think that that's it's almost better for have the player identify what that issue is and then have that same player create a little mantra to where if they start to feel that way or if they start to see something like i think i think kyle friend has he got and by no way am i encouraging tattoos for young people but um once you're old enough to decide go ahead but I think he got a tattoo. And don't just get a, a volleyball a, tattoo. A, yeah, don't don't do it. I will make fun of you. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think he got one that is just a smiley face, you know. And it's something like as simple as that, you know, just smile or something mm. like that. So I, I think Mark, uh, my my suggestion, I think it would be a great team building exercise and a great connector for you and your player um, to just sit down, identify that issue, and then come up with a mantra together. But let them lead the way because it's something that they're going to be using. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Christian, got your question. Why do you think men are not able to sit on emotions very well? Uh, first off, I don't think it is. it stops at just men. I, I think that anyone who plays a sport of beach volleyball or anybody who does anything in, in the sports world has the ability to not deal with emotions very well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just but, it's a gathering of of statistics that we know that from from marriage from situations that have been observed and documented through psychologists that this is how men and women again in general on average handle social situations mm -hmm. uh, we you know i've got a minor in psych but i i don't have a master's so I, I don't have those stats to share with yeah. you and exactly why but there have been hundreds of books written on it maybe those books will be later on burned as completely false <laughs> <laughs> you know you never um, know but with with the current statistics that we have that's just uh, what the what the observation observations say and uh, there has been success uh, i know that my marriage counselor he's he's seen a lot of success in helping people communicate knowing that this is a general base to work from and then how do we talk about it from there yeah i think it comes a lot down to just frustration and boiling point and figuring out how you got there yep um all right that's it Christian says yeah. we're dropping golden nuggets. I yeah. love it. Pretty soon we'll turn them into Babcoin and we'll be hey. all over that blockchain. We're going to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, guys, we have uh, upcoming clinics. We are going to, let's see, let's run down the list. This week we are in Salt Lake City. I'm back home and I legitimately feel like I'm back home. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's nice to be in a place where you see all of your friends' faces that I spend so much time with. Um, so we're in Salt Lake City this weekend. And we have only individual spots left. And I think there are three single session spots left. You can find that at betterbeach.com forward slash clinics soon. And these are the ones that are going to uh, sell out. Ozark. We're going to Volleyball Ozark. They have a 10-court indoor facility. So if you're in Missouri or nearby, go ahead and sign up for that. We're going to Loveland, Ohio with John Drake at Grand Sands Volleyball. Uh, that's later in the spring. We are going to Huntsville, Alabama. So if you're in the kind of Atlanta, Huntsville, Alabama area, come out. It's seven and a half hours of training in one day with current FIVB, AVP players and coaches. Um, 
We're also going to Long Island. That's coming up really soon. Long Island is March 5th and 6th. So if you want to come out to Endless Summer, we only have 24 spots there because there are only two courts. So if you want to do that, you got to jump on that quick. And then later in the spring, we're going to Westchester in New York to work with uh, Westchester Volleyball. So a lot of clinics coming up. And I know that a lot of people have been contacting us, trying to get us to come to their city. And the questions that we always get are, you know, how many people do we need? What do you need to make this clinic happen? We need a court that you can control. So uh, that means that you need to be able to connect us with the manager, the owner of a facility, or if it's in your backyard, that's fine. But we need a minimum of 12 full day signups in order for us to send one coach, a minimum of 12 full day signups on one court. And those full day signups are 225 for the day which means um, three sessions, each two and a half hours. So it's seven and a half hours in a day, uh, plus shirts and swag and everything like that. Uh, but we need those verbal commitments before we are ready to start building that out. And that's really it. And hopefully you guys can bring your own ball so that we don't have to travel with them. But we need a minimum of 12 people on one court who are ready to commit for a full day at 225. And if you guys can start gathering that, you can get me, Brandon, our team of coaches, Logan Weber, DJ Klasnick, uh, Ali, JM, rock star coaches filled with national champions, FIVB players, AVP players, um, and we would love to work with you. So get in touch. Now you know what you need, and we're happy to rock. All right. I like it. You going on the mountain today? Um, I got, I got a little date planned. I'm, I'm not going okay. skiing, but, uh, a mountain will be, I'm not sure if she's watching. Uh, I, I did watching see her on the, uh, Instagram. So yeah. I, she I got, was snooping. Got a little picnic planned. So. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, I hope nice. you guys, uh, have a great Valentine's day. I uh, love both of you a lot. So love you too, buddy. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah, man. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Hey, see you on the sand. See you on the sand. Light up.